In this video, we're talking about Tropical Storm Ida. The National Hurricane Center is already predicting that this storm will make landfall in Louisiana as a major hurricane. And of course, we're going to analyze all of the latest model data so you can be prepared for what's ahead. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Guys, sorry for the mess behind me. I'm trying to like reorganize the room and set up some new camera angles. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a camera. There's a new camera. We got some lighting behind me there. I'm trying to do some new stuff for the live stream that's coming up, and I'm just not finished. And by the way, if you're new here, welcome to the channel. Uh, this is what I do, guys. I talk about weather, okay? Anytime there's severe weather, I post daily updates going in-depth with the forecast models and letting you know what's going on. Whether that's a tornado outbreak, a blizzard, or a hurricane, or a tropical storm, it doesn't matter to me. I'm always going to be here for you. So make sure you like this video, subscribe, and turn notifications on so you don't miss anything. And let's go ahead and start talking about the weather. All right, we're going up close and personal with uh, Tropical Storm Ida here. Current satellite presentation doesn't look too impressive, okay? There's a lot of convection out there. There's a lot of storms going up. It looks like little explosions going up inside of the storm there, and that's just new thunderstorms that are forming. And this is going to continue to happen as it passes over Cuba. Now, once it gets past Cuba, we're going to see this thing start to swirl and really start to deepen and turn into possibly a major hurricane. Let's get an update from the National Hurricane Center. All right, so this is the latest 8 a.m. update from the National Hurricane Center. By the time this video goes up, there will probably be a new update, but I'm not imagining that it's going to change very much, okay? This is what we're looking at. 8 a.m. Friday, this is where the storm was. We're expecting it to turn into a hurricane right here in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico around 2 p.m. tomorrow, okay? It's going to become a hurricane, and then it's going to massively intensify as it heads towards Louisiana, okay? You can see that M right there. You see where it changes from an S to an H? That's a tropical storm into a hurricane, and the H into an M is from a regular hurricane to a major hurricane. And what a major hurricane is, it's just a hurricane that's a category three or higher. And that's pretty much what they're predicting for a landfall here is a category three hurricane. Now, there are some models that are showing, you know, much more than that. And there are some models that agree with it. So we're going to take a look at those here in a second. But as you can see, there are already hurricane watches in effect for the entire coast of Louisiana and also portions of southern Mississippi and Alabama. This cone here is what we call the cone of uncertainty. So the storm can still go anywhere inside of that cone. It can make landfall over here in western Louisiana, or it could even make landfall here on the southern portion of Mississippi on the Gulf Coast there. So we have pretty Pretty much locked it down. The models are in pretty good agreement here, but there's still a couple hundred mile range here where the storm could go either way. Current winds in the storm are already 60 miles an hour. All it takes is 74 miles an hour to make it a hurricane. So, you know, if this thing turns into a hurricane quicker, I expect it to wrap up and start tightening up quicker, which means that it will likely take a more easterly course. Uh, but if it stays weaker, if it actually doesn't turn into a hurricane until it gets all the way out here, I'm expecting that it might actually go a little bit further west, okay? Which would actually mean a stronger hurricane at landfall, okay? There's a lot of different, you know, things that are going on here. And let's start talking about them all on the weather models. All right, we're going to start looking at some model data here. And we are going to start with the NAM 3 kilometer. Now, an important disclaimer that I have to say here is that the NAM 3 km is not meant for tracking tropical cyclones. A lot of times it's a little bullish with the intensity of the storm. And it's always bullish with the intensity of the storm. Uh, so this is going to show a monster category five. And that's just not realistic right now. OK, I'm not saying that there couldn't be a category five storm out of Ida, but let's take this model with a grain of salt because it's not meant for actually tracking tropical cyclones. The reason that we're looking at this model is because it allows us to take a look at an infrared satellite image, a simulated infrared satellite image, and it's going to help me explain my uh, point here. You saw the title of the video. It was called Bomb Cyclone Explosive Storms Heading Towards the U.S. You probably think I just put that on there for clicks and for views or whatever because, you know, it's a pretty catchy title. But no, this storm is probably going to undergo what we call bombogenesis, okay, or it's going to turn into a bomb cyclone. And I really want to explain what that is. And this infrared satellite image on the NAM uh, is really going to help me do that. So let's let's go ahead and pull this forward. You can see our storm start to pop up here, okay? And at this point, it looks like to me like it's a weaker hurricane, uh, but it has rapidly intensified into a hurricane and it's going to continue to do so as it goes off to the north and west. Now, once again, the NAM model here has a little bit further of a westward track with this storm. I don't know if I buy that. But anyways, we've got this big cyclone here, Hurricane Ida coming up through the Gulf of Mexico and it's getting ready to undergo what we call bombogenesis, okay? And I really do think this is going to happen uh, with this storm. And basically what that is, it's what we call when a storm undergoes rapid intensification and the low pressure center deepens a certain amount in a certain amount of time, okay? So within a 24-hour period, the pressure on this storm is going to drop even more than the criteria uh, that is necessary for it to be labeled bombogenesis. And uh, there's a couple of reasons why that's significant. First of all, let me show you this happen on the IR satellite here. You see how rapidly 
it just blows up and explodes there. Uh, now, once again, this is probably overdone here on the NAM model, uh, but this is a good graphic representation of a tiny storm turning into a giant storm in a very, very short uh, period of time. So this is showing Saturday at 3 p.m. We've got this storm, and then <laughs> Sunday at 10 a.m. We've got this storm. Uh, so... <laughs> That is definitely the definition of rapid intensification. And this is significant because for one, uh, you know, if a storm undergoes bombogenesis, the end result is that it's a stronger storm, right? And obviously that's bad. We don't want to see a stronger storm here, but this process, okay, where the storm's going to be deepening and it's going to be reaching its maximum uh, potential and intensity, it's actually, I think that that's actually going to happen right as it makes landfall here in Louisiana. So not only does bombogenesis creating a stronger storm pose threats, but it's the fact that that process, that deepening of that low pressure, the intense drop in the pressure of the storm and the increase in the wind field is going to happen as it makes landfall that may make this a uniquely dangerous situation. All big storms that have big time pressure drops undergo bombogenesis, uh, but a lot of times, especially with hurricanes, that happens over the ocean. OK, uh, the fact that this is going to be happening as it crosses onto land is going to pose an additional threat because not only are you going to have the accelerating wind speeds, you're going to have the deepening pressure and the accelerating wind field on top of that happening and expanding as it comes onto land, which may pose additional threats uh, with even more wind gusts and storm surge and stuff like that. So even though the NAM model here is pretty, you know, over exaggerative with these storms and it really sniffs out that rapid intensification uh, really well, uh, some of the other models that we're going to look at, the more reliable models, aren't as good as picking up that rapid intensification as the NAM is, okay? So I think uh, right now a logical explanation and a logical uh, expectation would be that we can expect something to happen that's in between what the Euro shows and what the NAM shows, okay? These are just different models that we look at and I'm gonna show you all of them. First of all though, let's watch this loop one more time. Uh, this line right here, the reason you can't see south of it is because this is called the North American model and it just, it doesn't work down here. They, they, for some reason they cut off the imagery down there. Uh, so we really can't see anything until it makes its appearance there and then blows up. And once again, this is showing, it looks like the, according to this model, it's going towards Houston. It's not going towards Houston. The NAM is wrong. Hey, future Ryan popping in here again. This is the problem with trying to do pre-recorded hurricane coverage. Uh, we, we just got a new update from the NAM, and I just want to show you what it looks like here. I was talking about how far west uh, this version of the NAM that we're looking at is, uh, and it, this one definitely looks, the, the latest update, the 12Z, definitely looks like it's uh, a little bit more realistic as far as the track goes, taking it a little bit into western Louisiana, okay? Now, the intensity here, it's still overdone, uh, but this is another good example of bombogenesis as that storm enters those very, very, very intensely warm waters. Okay, let's get back to the video. So let's take a look at a more reliable model that we would actually look at to forecast this storm, the Euro. All right, here we are with the Euro model. Uh, by the way, if you wanna keep up with the date and time, everything's gonna be displayed up here in Eastern time. And here's what our tropical storm or hurricane looks like at the time that this video goes up, okay? Around 11 a.m. Uh, what we're looking at here are the 850 millibar wind speeds and heights. And basically, I just wanna show you this because it can also demonstrate that rapid intensification that we're gonna to see okay and that's what I want to show you so as the storm comes up into the Gulf of Mexico it intensifies at a you know normal rate okay by this time we might see a category one category two hurricane according to the euro model and I uh, totally buy that okay but what it's getting ready to do it's getting ready to pass over a high octane area of the um, ocean where the sea surface temperatures are really high and they're also elevated temperatures of the water deep inside of the water so no matter how much additional rainfall and cooling effect uh, tropical storm Ida or hurricane Ida has on that area of the Gulf of Mexico, new warmer waters will rise to the surface and allow for that you know, deep convection and intensification to continue to happen. And then, like I mentioned yesterday, some of the strongest and you know warmest waters are right up here next to Louisiana, okay? And once it gets into that, uh, we're talking about 90 degree waters up here. That's when that um, you know rapid intensification can be expected to happen. And you can see it so clearly here on the Euro, okay? We've got a really strong storm here at 11 a.m. on Sunday, and we'll probably be live streaming at this point, and we'll probably be looking at it, and you might think, well, that's not a major hurricane or whatever. Uh, but right here, the last few frames, watch how these uh, lines get packed closer together. That shows the sudden deepening of the pressure. And then watch how this wind field, the browns and the reds expand out behind it. That shows the deepening pressure expanding the wind field around it. And um, that this once again shows that bombogenesis happening 
right as the storm makes landfall here. So we've got a decently organized and a powerful storm here, but everything is pretty spaced out. All these lines here, uh, what you want to see, if you want to see a powerful storm is them to be packed together. And that's exactly what happens right before it makes landfall there. Uh, according to the Euro model, a little bit further west and a little bit closer to where Hurricane Laura made landfall uh, just last year. So what is this actually showing, Ryan? We don't want to see the 850 millibars and all that. We just want to know how bad it's going to be. I get it. I get it. And I'm going to show you a, a tool that we use right here uh, called the 10 meter wind gust uh, product. Okay. So this is going to show you how fast the wind can blow 10 meters above the surface. And that's generally what you can expect as far as top end wind gusts go on the surface. So keep your eye on this little number down here, the max 80 there. Maximum wind gusts in this storm tomorrow at around 8 a.m. is going to be about 80 miles an hour. And then as we go forward, you can see it starts to intensify. We're at 84 miles an hour. And then look, we're, I mean, this is close. We are very close to landfall here and we've got maximum wind gusts at 85.7 miles an hour. And you'll probably be looking at the radar. You'll probably be watching the news and you're going to be like, well, 85 miles an hour, that's a category one, almost category two hurricane. I thought this was supposed to be a major hurricane. Well, bada bing, bada boom. There it goes. <laughs> The rapid intensification happens, according to this model, later in the day on Sunday, around 10 p.m., uh, and we see those winds go all the way up to 124.7 miles an hour, 125 miles an hour. That is a, a major hurricane and would pose extreme problems in the form of storm surge to southeastern uh, Louisiana. So uh, this is just one model run. Don't take it to heart. Uh, the storm very well could be this intense and make landfall in this exact spot. But there are other models out there and you know some some of them are showing a little bit different stuff so uh, let's take a look at some of those okay this is the hwrf model let's get it going let's see what we're looking at here tomorrow saturday around 5 p.m this is expecting that we could see you know a category one hurricane out here in the gulf of mexico and we're getting ready to see that rapid intensification happens as it approaches uh southern louisiana here now we're at 116 miles an hour 121 113 right there's your max wind field according to the hwrf at once again sunday at 8 p.m uh so you know the National Hurricane Center is saying that this is going to make landfall a little bit after 2 p.m. Um, a lot of the models are saying 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, so it does look like to me we might be in the 4 or 5 p.m. time frame. We'll know a lot more tomorrow exactly when it's going to make landfall. But uh, according to this model, this looks really similar to the Euro. And it's actually pulling it on shore right there around the Vermilion Bay at, near uh, south of Lafayette and just to the east of Marsh Island. Okay, so if you live in that area in uh, Louisiana, this is uh, this is almost certainly going to be uh, a very strong and devastating storm for you. Make sure you're taking your precautions and getting ready for it right now. And then, of course, as this goes inland, Lafayette's going to get some hurricane force winds. Uh, and then, uh, you know, it, it's going to weaken pretty significantly once it be, gets deeper inland. Uh, so I don't think this is going to be a situation where we see a hurricane all the way up into central portions of Mississippi. Uh, but definitely lots of rain and severe weather, maybe some isolated tornadoes are going to be possible up here, especially on the southeastern side in eastern Louisiana and uh, portions of Mississippi, maybe even into Alabama. Uh, but we'll have to we'll have to watch that as we get closer because those things can be really hard to predict. OK, let's play this out on the hurricane panel so we can see the 950 millibar winds, the sea surface temperatures, the precipitable water and what the radar could look like as we go forward. We're really close to landfall now. We are at 11 a.m. on Sunday. And once again, remember, the longer this thing stays over water, the worse it's going to be. OK, so we actually want it to make landfall earlier in the day here in southeastern Louisiana. Now, if you live over there, I'm not I, I, I don't hate you. I don't want you to get hurt, hit by a hurricane. But the fact of the matter is, is that if you get hit by a hurricane, it's probably going to be much less uh, significant than the hurricane that would hit a little bit further to your west, because I'm telling you guys, these waters are 90 degrees and um, they are just burning up and ready to fuel a hurricane. And then as you can see, as we get further inland, it rapidly deteriorates, but these feeder bands here uh, on the radar, that's what I'm concerned about with possibly some isolated tornadoes and severe weather there from Alabama into Mississippi, maybe all the way up into Tennessee. So uh, we're gonna keep a very close eye on that as we go forward. But for right now, we are mainly concerned with the landfalling areas here in Southern Louisiana. If you live down there, please, please take this seriously. I think that it's almost certainly going to be a category three or above. The ceiling for this thing is limitless. Okay. There's very little wind shear. The sea surface temperatures are very hot. There's not a lot of Saharan dust outside. This thing from turning into a big category five storm, not saying that's what's going to happen, but it is a possibility. If you live down here in Southeastern Louisiana, especially please, 
take this seriously. All right, so here's the final thing we're gonna look at. It's another cool tool we have uh, access to, and we'll be using this a lot during the live stream. Uh, but this is the live reconnaissance data from the hurricane hunters, okay? So we actually have, if you didn't know, we actually have people that fly airplanes into hurricanes, uh, th and that's how we know so much about them, okay? <laughs> Even when they're out in the middle of the ocean and we know exactly what the pressure is and how fast the winds are blowing and all that stuff, uh, it's because we actually have hurricanes out there gathering data for us. Uh, and uh, the latest uh, mission that went out is uh, Mission 4 into Ida, okay? And w basically what they do is they, they fly into the center or where they think the center of circulation is and then they do this x motion uh, so that they can gather all of the wind field data around the entire storm okay so you can see uh, some of the higher winds are happening over here and you can also see uh, according to the wind barbs uh, that there is rotation in this storm there's absolutely rotation and some of the highest wind gusts are coming out here on the south uh, eastern side okay that's around 50 mile an hour and the central pressure does look like it's around 996 millibars which means that it's quite a bit more intense than it was yesterday estimated max Maximum surface winds are around 61 miles an hour, so that's an increase from the last update. And they're going to continue to do this day in and day out until the storm makes landfall, okay? And we're going to keep up with all the information here. Guys, if you like this, if you want to know more about this, if you want, if you live on the coast of Louisiana and you want to be updated with the most in-depth uh, information that you can be updated with, make sure you subscribe and all that stuff. And that's all the weather talk I have for you today, guys. Seriously. We're in full-blown hurricane mode here. The plan is that I'm going going to post another update tomorrow morning, possibly another update tomorrow evening or afternoon, and that'll be my final update. And then we're going to do a live stream uh, pretty much for the whole day on Sunday. Now, if we expect landfall to happen around 4 or 5 p.m. on Sunday, I'll probably start around 6 or 7 a.m. with the live stream, and we'll watch the thing all the way until it makes landfall. We'll relay all this reconnaissance data. We'll relay all the storm reports. We'll watch it on radar and satellite and everything. And then a couple hours after it makes landfall we'll continue to to look at everything and then we'll probably call it a day that's that's right it's probably going to be a 12 hour live stream or something like that so make sure you're subscribed with notifications on so you can be there too and uh i'll see you then goodbye Whoop.